So we are here from uh, Cook County GIS Department. Um, and we are going to be presenting about a new uh, data and map and application hub that, is, that we call Cook Central. Um, and before I go any further, as Joel mentioned, we have GIS Day this Friday, the most wonderful time of the year <laughs> at 9 a.m. 69 West Washington, you can talk to, uh, to us as well as other GIS colleagues. Um, and so anyway, before we start also, who is here from Cook County? Please raise your hand. All right, Cook County. <laughs> so we packed the audience. Um, and our email is there uh, as well as the general phone number. My name is David Arfa. I am a senior GIS specialist uh, for Cook County GIS. I've been working at Cook County for 11 years now. I started uh, with the 911 dispatch um, for Cook County unincorporated areas, updating map data. Then I moved into the GIS department. And I'm David Treerig. I have six months with Cook County's GIS department. I'm a GIS developer there. And previously, I was at Loyola University Chicago with the uh, Institute of Environmental Sustainability uh, for 12 years as a GIS specialist there. I actually see a student in the audience. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about, well, first, Cook County itself. Uh, Cook County has 6 million people in it. Uh, 3 million live in Chicago and three million live in the surrounding 135 municipal suburbs of Chicago. Um, so it's about a 50-50 split um, within Cook County. And Cook County is the second most populated county in the United States. Uh, we have 136 municipalities. Uh, GIS actually sh uh, serves um, many or all of those GI uh, all those municipalities by uh, supplying GIS data, as well as various um, applications. And uh, Cook County government is divided into 13 elected offices, such as county board president, county clerk, county assessor, county sheriff, etc. cetera. Um, some of the milestones in uh, the Cook County GIS department history, or Cook County GIS, is uh, Cook County began, or the GIS began in the highway department in 1987. And actually, my former boss who has retired, Alan Hobscheid, was uh, one of the leaders to pave the way uh, for GIS at Cook County. Um, all Cook County parcels were digitized in, two th in the year 2000. So if you, you, can, you can find GIS data from 2000 to the present, um, regarding parcels, but if you go before that, you'll have to look through books because those haven't been digitized. Uh, Cook Viewer, the county's first GIS application, as well as first online uh, GIS parcel viewer, was released in 2010. Uh, just in case anybody doesn't know, a parcel is, a, is the property boundary. It's usually like for a single family ho home, it would be like the front yard, backyard, and structure, kind of the fence line around it is. Uh, is a parcel. Uh, our funding uh, is from a special purpose fund that is paid for by receiving a portion of recording fees from the recorder of deeds. So whenever a document gets recorded, there's a fee for that, and a portion of that fee goes to help um, enhance and uh, develop GIS at Cook County. Our primary role uh, we oversee the centralized GIS enterprise for the entire county. Uh, we manage databases, um, and we have other supporting GIS staff in other departments. So there's staff in the highway department that specialize in GIS for the highway department, um, as well as staff in public health that specialize in GIS for public health. And we uh, work with them uh, to uh, make sure their data is operating uh, well, as well as any expertise if they, are, if they have questions about using GIS, uh, we work with them. Um, on top of that, we help coordinate and develop most of the web applications 
and open geospatial data uh, provided by Cook County agencies. And we also, our other major role is to uh, provide data to municipalities as well as GIS tools for them. This is a very basic diagram of our enterprise architecture. Um, there are many things missing. There are multiple databases, there are multiple servers, there's firewalls, there's security things. Um, but just to give you an idea how our enterprise looks, um, backbone of it all is the GIS database. And uh, we have Cook County GIS users that can edit using versions. Um, so we have editors edit data, and it goes right into the centralized database. If they, are an agent, if they work in that agency, they will be able to edit the data. If they do not work in that agency, they can just view the data. But all the data is shared, uh, or not all the data, but mo most of the data is shared between agencies uh, based on what that agency uh, allows us to share. Um, from the data side that moves into a map application server. So this application server, uh, basically it, it hosts GIS data and makes it web accessible. Um, so those, the different data layers um, are hosted here and those layers can be used in custom web applications. So we uh, design custom web applications for the public as well as for internal users. Uh, we like to be able to design for um, anybody, and so not even, even novices like Joel, uh, who is not an expert of GIS, but can really, knows how to use a web map. So we, we make, uh, we make at web applications for people like that, um, so that county users as well as the public can browse uh, Cook County GIS data. Um, from here, we move up to our ArcGIS online organizational account. Um, it's basically a cloud-hosted um, platform that allows uh, more collaboration. Uh, it allows interdepartment and interagency collaboration. And another huge benefit is that it allows um, our GIS users to develop map applications on their own. Uh, before we had this, they would have to come to us and we would have to develop something custom for them. But now, uh, with ArcGIS Online, they're able to develop applications on their own and push it out to the public. The elections department put out the election results from the, um, from the last presidential election, and you can uh, view that, and they made it on ArcGIS Online. You can see vote counts and uh, voter turnout. It's, it's really, really pretty interesting. Um, this is our current um, maps and data page, uh, and we'll, we'll be showing you the future of our maps and data page in a second. So you'll see that we have many of these applications. One application I want to highlight, um, and I want to hopefully present, uh, talk about with other people who are interested after this presentation is Connect to Cook. It has a lot of uh, really robust demographic as well as economic information. Um, it, it's, it's, it was made as an economic, economic development tool. However, I think it has a lot of social justice applications. Um, and I think it's, it's a very powerful tool. And there's a lot of data available through it. And I'd be happy to show anybody after, um, after this presentation. Um, then there's TIF Viewer, um, as well as other uh, applications that we made in uh, collaboration with a number of other agencies. Um, and so we have free GIS data available on, our, on the Socrata Open Data site right now. Um, you can type in CC GIS data and CC GIS map. Um, those are key ter search terms that you can easily and quickly find both of our, our, our PDF maps as well as our data. Um, and uh, in 2014, that's when our GIS data became free. Um, and we launched ArcGIS Online in 2016, and we've been getting uh, different county agencies uh, on board with ArcGIS Online gradually throughout the year. And now we're going to be, by the end of, sometime before the end of December, we'll be launching the, uh, our hub, our Cook Central, which David will tell you about. All right. Thank you, David. <coughs> 
So this is an exclusive preview for Cook Central. Our, um, our plan is to launch shortly. That's all I can tell you. So this, this portal, uh, Cook Central, this isn't just the, the latest uh, fancy tool to, to get data out there. This is really a tangible way that we're connecting um, the data that the county um, creates and hosts uh, with the policy objectives that, that we have. Um, so what I want to show you is basically an overview of some of the features of this site, and um, then we'll, we'll take questions after that, all right? So the first thing here on the, the home page of Cook Central, um, we wanted to display a search bar. Everybody searches for everything. So I envision this more like uh, a way for return visitors to, to get straight to what they're looking for. Um, rather than um, first-time visitors using the search, we've built out this page uh, so that we give previews and insights into some of the different data categories. So I'll show you those in a moment. This first main section here is uh, our featured initiative. And we've begun with improving health outcomes. It's one of our, our president's major policy initiatives and goals, looking at the social impact that Cook County government can have on the citizens in the county. Um, we're excited to, to be highlighting the medical examiner's brand new application. Um, this shows uh, fatalities under the jurisdiction of the, the Cook County Medical Examiner. And it, it uh, shows the gun-related violence as well as opioid-related um, deaths. And so this, this tool is uh, providing insight to the public on the locations of these different types of uh, uh, fatalities. Along with Along with that initiative, um, we've also highlighted some other, some other um, programs that the county provides uh, through the, the um, hospital and health system, through the sheriff's office, uh, opioid prevention, as well as uh, the Justice Advisory Council and various other nonprofits that focus on violence prevention and uh, drug abuse prevention. So this will change, this highlighted uh, application area, this initiative area will change periodically as in line with the, the priorities of the, the administration. This next section uh, highlights some of our applications. David showed our current uh, application gallery on the Maps and Data page, and we have a, a few here. We'll return to this uh, developers panel later. But our application gallery um, shows all of our various applications. We don't really have time to, to get into them, but uh, here's the Connect to Cook that, that David was talking about. Um, and Cook Viewer is a very popular application. It's a property search portal uh, with lots of information uh, about properties in, at the parcel level. Let's go back. Whoa. This isn't even Internet Explorer. <laughs> okay. All right. So these icons obviously need a, a little resizing. Uh, <laughs> our, what you would see is a, a set of icons uh, grouping our data sets into various categories. So places of interest was the one that I managed to uh, pick out of that mess. We also have boundaries and um, property data, uh, natural environment, conservation data, as well as um, printable maps. We have a whole category on maps that are ready to go, printable, um, downloadable, and printable. So each of these uh, subpages for the data categories then highlights um, either a data set or an application using that, that data. And 
I'll just uh, click on one of the, the data sets itself. That's, this is the, the preview of this, this type of data. Rather than just uh, forcing you into a long list of search results, we, we give you kind of a, a preview. So the data set itself, these pages are, are really nice and, and informative and can help you with uh, understanding the data set that you've uh, begun exploring. So you can see the, the interactive map is uh, clickable, and you can see the attributes of the features, as well as the, the attributes in the, um, in the data set itself. These little icons show whether it's um, able to be visualized, um, and so you get a little quick preview uh, based on some attributes. And you'll notice also that the map, the map has changed uh, to classify the data by, by this uh, subtype attribute. So a nice, quick little way to look at the data and preview it. This next tab over here uh, gives you the, the tabular data itself. Um, and so that then can be filtered uh, by uh, clicking on, um, on the headings and filtering the data, like so. All right. <coughs> that will filter on the map. The nice thing about this, then, is you can, <coughs> you can down, download the data directly, um, either the, the full data set or the filtered data set with this filter applied. Oh, yeah. Thank you. <coughs> Teamwork, yep. <laughs> The uh, API button here gives you the, the REST endpoint, the URL, that you can use in your, your, your own custom application so that you can right away consume these services, uh, either the filtered service or, um, or the full data set service right into your, your own application. The last tab here really lets you drill down into the API itself without having to dig around a lot in, in documentation. It gives you the ability to look at the attributes and decide which, which fields you'd like. Uh, filter based on the, the spatial extent of the map up here. And then decide whether you want the geometry or just the attributes and various other things here. And it gives you the, the JSON um, output like that. So you can see the query URL that, again, you can just uh, drop into your application and begin using. Questions uh, about the, the data page? <coughs> Does the API also provide access to uh, the way that the data is currently styled so that you could easily like put that in a different website while you're choosing the original styling? Yes, yeah, so much of the symbology is stored with the, with the REST service. Um, and so you can use the existing symbology or um, use your own, yeah. Yes. Out of curiosity, so is this information, uh, like, uh, is this, does this contribute or is this part of, like, uh, other websites, say, like, Trulia.com or, uh, like, real, realty uh, type of database? Is this all integrated with residential areas, <coughs> like, obviously, things here in Cook County? So this is uh, really Cook County Cook County's uh, own data. Um, and so something like Trulia uh, may utilize this data. I don't know if that's the case. But, but no, we don't, we don't consume anything from them. <laughs> sure. Yeah, we'll, we'll move on, and we'll get to other questions later. Thank you. The last thing I'd like to show you is our developers resources here. What we've put together here is uh, a page where you can come in and immediately jump in and, and start learning uh, how to use the information provided in this portal, the data and map services that, that we've created here and uh, brought to you. I have a, a couple of uh, quick, easy uh, samples 
right? Built one built with uh, Leaflet, one built with the ArcGIS um, JavaScript API, just to give you a sense of uh, what's what's uh, very simple uh, to create. So at Cook County, we utilize the ArcGIS uh, platform. Um, it's a, a proprietary software company, Esri or ESRI or Esri, um, capitalized or not. Um, so ArcGIS Online is this uh, cloud-based platform that uh, David referred to uh, that we use internally. It provides uh, free accounts to anyone, so you can sign up for a free account and then uh, consume the, the data here from Cook Central in, and build your own map right, right there. So the next uh, resource here is uh, really for developers, and this is a great, great uh, entry into the world of uh, developer resources for um, ArcGIS, uh, mobile, um, database, server level, um, desktop, uh, web clients, all kinds of good stuff here. Um, so those are the, the Esri resources we have. Uh, there are many others. And then we highlighted a few open source projects that can utilize our, our data as well. Leaflet uh, is a very popular platform. Anybody use Leaflet? Can I show of hands? All right, we've got a few. Um, story maps. Well, Leaflet's a, a nice lightweight um, JavaScript library for, for creating maps. Um, story maps are a really fantastic way to communicate information using uh, the spatial perspective. And so Esri has a lot of different templates with no coding necessary. Uh, you can drop, drop in uh, information, uh, take your own, your own photos and build an application like, like you see there. Um, we have any Python users? Anybody? Any? Yeah, okay. So, so the API for Python using uh, ArcGIS is really very robust, and it will connect you with all of the other uh, sort of scientific and numerical uh, computational tools that Python offers uh, to be used with, with the mapping data. Last thing I'm going to mention is these uh, open data tutorials and starter kits. Uh, the people in, uh, in uh, our sister departments in uh, Washington, D.C. and Syracu Syracuse, New York, have provided um, tutorials, really in-depth ways to jump in and get started from, from scratch. Um, so you can check these, these resources out. So the, the, overall, the overall story here is that uh, we're really pleased to be able to offer up all of these, these data resources, a centralized place where you can come and, and get access to all of our applications and um, download data, download maps, and create your own stuff. We're really excited to see what people are going to do with all this, this information. Okay? Hi. So as a user of public GIS data, I have a hard time sometimes knowing um, what source a data set comes from, um, whether it's like city or county or a special government or township. Um, and so I'm wondering how have you guys been dealing with sharing data across agencies? And what um, do you have, is this only Cook County produced data or does it cover, is it data sets that are in Cook County? Is there any redundancies with other levels of government? The data that this site is hosting just data that Cook County has from Cook County government. Um, and as far as data sources go, um, all of our data has metadata, and we will also be including metadata with um, all the data that's downloadable on the site. Uh, so what was your experience you know, choosing uh, ArcGIS as uh, the platform for the OpenGIS data versus using the functionality that's already built into Socrata and Cook County's existing data portal? Well, we, uh, so we started rolling out, ArcGIS Arc Online became a good uh, step 
as far as WebGIS for us because we have an Esri environment. Um, and so this allows us to streamline the process of getting data out because it's also linked in with ArcGIS Online. For all of our, all of our um, data layers within ArcGIS Online, we can easily share them to this portal just by choosing to share it. Um, and it makes it a very easy streamlined process. Um, another advantage uh, to this portal is that you can download by extent. So previously with Socrata, um, people had to download the entire data set. And oftentimes, especially with address points, which there's four million records, that's just a ton of data that when somebody really just wants to know one neighborhood's uh, group of address points. So, um, so that was another advantage. Plus, uh, it, it also provided easy links to REST endpoints. Um, so that, and yeah, it just streamlined things. Because right now, uh, once this uh, hub, the Cook Central is released, the data is, that's being shown on it is becoming from replicated data directly from our database, uh, rather than having to copy it off to another platform. So as our data gets updated, uh, basically weekly, the data in here gets updated. So I work for uh, Soft Choice, and I work within the sled market uh, within the Wisconsin Iowa territory. So I'm a little curious as far as uh, the security risks that you guys take on, or what? Like, what are some of the biggest security challenges that you guys have to tackle with specifically within the GIS department in relation to like building out applications? Uh, are there any external, any outstanding security risks that you guys take on on a daily basis, or what's kind of like? The landscape there. I would say, like, I don't feel like an expert in the security standpoint. We have, Cook County has an internet security office that basically guides us as to how we uh, expose things online. So we have DMZs and ports that we're supposed to use. Um, so that's, we just follow their protocol, basically. Another safeguard that we do is that our internal database that gets edited by internal users um, is here. And then we have a replica of that database, which we call Web Replica, um, over here. Um, so if anything happens to Web Replica, honestly, it would be no big deal. Web Replica is the one that's being uh, hit when you're using it uh, online. Um, while our internal database is secured. So th that we, we have data security that way. Um, so this is awesome. This is all like really cool data. I'm kind of curious, which stuff is, is there just anything that's particularly like new that hasn't been released before that this portal uh, is enabling the release of? Um, and I'm also kind of curious about some of the data that is sold. Is that still going to be sold? Like I know some of the assessor's data is kind of locked up. Um, so is there any of that going to change with the rollout of this portal? Um, as far as the assessor's data goes, they haven't notified us of any changes. Um, as far as other data that hasn't been available um, via Socrata, one is imagery. Um, so there's going to be, there's rest points to directly to our ima aerial image service. So basically, we have uh, aerial imagery for all of Cook County going back uh, I think since 2000, I think it's 98. Um, and so you can, via this portal, you'll be able to view all the imagery that we have. Um, and that'll be a new thing. Another new thing uh, will be elevation contours. Um, so that's just uh, contour lines about the very flat elevation of Cook <laughs> County. Um, but the data, the data has been too big. Uh, for Socrata, so we this allows us to share that as well. What percent of your data? What percent of your files are shared publicly versus kept internal, and what's the process for making that decision? You know, percentage-wise, I don't. I don't know. I'll. I would say our. There are some layers internal that are very specialized, 
okay, and so and don't have a lot of records in them, um, and but then there but I would say the majority of data that has tons of records we are sharing. Um, how things get determined to share, it's based on what the agency uh, allows us to share. So we go to them and ask, do you mind if this, this is a nice, you know, this is good data, do you mind if we share it? Um, one thing that recently happened was with the medical examiner, um, and so uh, they wanted us to start mapping their data, um, and as part of that conversation was, do you mind if we share that data? You know, uh, David talked about the application, so there's going to be an application that allows the general public to use and uh, filter the data, look at the data using a map application, um, but the data itself will also be available for analysts and, and, and the press and whatnot um, via an open data portal. So, um, so it, it, it's, it's, we suggest it sometimes, um, or the agency wants to share it and we work it, the agency that owns the data has to give us clearance, is the bottom line. Um, I have a question. Uh, I, I noticed, I saw that some of the maps were, it looks like you guys have worked with some outside consultants on at least part of the data portal project. And I'm curious, since there's a lot of GIS Cook County people in the room, if you could talk more about what your day-to-day -day looks like and where you see the value of having outside consultants, like what parts they help with versus which parts uh, were conceptualized directly and whether it's an issue of like time or expertise or specialization or like what, what factors go into that process. Sure. Yeah, as far as the portal itself, um, a lot of this was, was just built in-house. We, we put it together ourselves. Um, some of the custom, custom uh, tiles and, and cards and things like that. Um, as far as other, other vendors, sometimes there are larger projects that require uh, a contract. Uh, for instance, imagery acquisition. None of us have uh, pilot's licenses, right? right. <laughs> yeah. Um, things like that require uh, an outside contract. Um, Generally, we're moving more in the direction, especially with the hiring of a developer in-house, we're moving more in the direction of developing things uh, ourselves rather than uh, contracting out. I, I would say our two, ma our two ma major applications that were developed outside, at least that Cook County GIS had responsibility for, was Cook Viewer, which is the parcel viewing application, and Connect to Cook. Um, and the reason we went to we, we hired a vendor is because some of the complexity either of the data or of some of the functionality, uh, it just would have been too much for one developer to take on. I'm excited about the data that can be exported and you might have said it and I might have missed like what format that exportable data that I could export and then import into another application would be in. Certainly. Um, we can we can export in a CSV file, just the flat tabular data, as well as uh, spatial data in shapefile and KML or KMZ. Um, so those are the, the main formats that, that uh, export from here. I'm just curious when you plan on releasing the new website. So as, as soon as we can, um, within the month of de December, certainly, that's our goal. We're just uh, clearing some last approval hurdles and and then it'll be out. Can you explain the uh, overlap or the separation between City of Chicago data and Cook County data? Uh, that's a good question. That's <laughs> <laughs> it's when I asked when I started at the county. Um, <laughs> uh, it seems like it's uh, a pretty s uh, stark distinction between data that the county owns uh, and manages, uh, and the city has its own um, GIS department, its own infrastructure for these things. Um, you know, we're, we're always looking for ways to uh, collaborate, and I think we have, we have good relations, but the departments are, are separate. And, and we share data with all municipalities. Uh, Chicago uses our street midline um, feature, for example. 
So it's, it's the, basically a line representing every single street throughout Cook County. So they use it, they may add to it, you know, they may add new attributes or new fields to the data for things that they're doing. Um, the Cook County's data and also municipal boundaries is another thing that Cook County maintains and shares with other municipalities, including Chicago. Um, but, uh, so we share data with them um, and between each other, uh, but um, we just, it's uh, just like any other municipality. We share the data with them and they use it how they would like to use it. Uh, first, the guys are exactly right. Our GIS team works a lot with Cook County GIS team, like the image files. The image files are very important for us to understand. We use them to even figure out where buildings are. So the dividing line is, is within the function of government and what we're supposed to do, because we collect data for the things that we're supposed to regulate. Cook County collects things for the things that they're supposed to regulate. In general, the highest level, Cook County managed properties. They, they, the, 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 the real unit of what they work with is often properties. And then they also service more things around clinics and, and hospitals, things that the city of Chicago, uh, we don't do anymore. City of Chicago doesn't run any more clinics. The city of Chicago, though, we permit buildings, we permit businesses that are allowed to exist, at least within the city of Chicago. When you get outside the boundary, sometimes Cook County starts doing some of the permitting or the food inspections or the cigarette inspections. So for the city of Chicago, we tend to deal with buildings, businesses, uh, 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 permitting, applications, things like that is something that we often do within the city of Chicago. More of that responsibility becomes Cook County after you get outside of the city limits, and then when it comes to the actual properties themselves or the actual land itself, uh, that really falls onto uh, Cook County as opposed to the city of Chicago. <laughs>